Okay, so right now we're going to draw a force diagram for the sled and kids being pulled at a constant speed along an icy surface. Now, one thing that is important to note is that the pull on the sled is at an angle. So I identify my system boundary, which is the two kids and the sled. I shrunk the system down to a single dot. And then because I'm assuming that the sled and the kids are moving to the right, I have my x-axis pointing to the right and then also extending to the left. And then my y-axis is perpendicular to that. The first force that I like to draw on a free body diagram is the force of gravity. In this case, it's the force of gravity acting on the sled and the kids by the earth. It's pointing straight down. It's pointing at the center of the earth. Then after that, I'm going to assume that there's a little bit of friction here. It's a force of friction acting on the sled and the kids by the ground. Now, this might be a weird force to start off with. However, I'm going to draw this one before I drew that force tension acting on the sled and the kids by the man because I wanted to be able to draw that force tension appropriately. Now, one thing that's important to note is I know that I should have a pull, this interaction between the man and our system, and it should match this angle that I have right here. That's what I'm trying to approximate with this angle that I drew here. But I also know that I have a constant speed. This means that overall, my acceleration should be zero. That means that my forces, horizontally and vertically, should be balanced. What this means is that while I can shorten or increase this force tension as much as I want, I need to say that the rightward amount of this force tension is the same as the leftward amount of any friction from the ground. So to make that a little bit easier for myself, I drew the force friction first, and then I used this length here to kind of approximate how far to the right I needed to draw my force tension. So that way it would kind of align with how much on the x-axis that force tension is to have a balanced force overall. Now there's one more force I do need to include, because while the ground is definitely pulling back on our system, it is also underneath the system, so it can be exerting a push upwards, that normal force. Now, typically, we've been drawing our normal forces the same size as our force gravity. But that really only applies if we have zero acceleration vertically, and we only have those two forces vertically. Right now, we have some amount of that force tension applied upwards. Because we have no acceleration up or down, that means that all of the downward forces need to be balanced out by all of the upward forces. So the fact that we have some amount of force tension upwards means that the ground did not need to be pushing up as hard on the sled and the kids as it would be if this force tension were directly to the right. Now the way that we can show this a little bit easier is by just actually breaking up this force tension into how much right and how much up that force is rather than me just talking about it. So I'm now eliminating that coordinate plane just to make this a little bit easier. But right now, this alone is a really good free body diagram that explains all of the forces acting directly on our system. We have identified for each of these four forces what two objects are interacting to cause that force. But it doesn't really explain the motion of the object, or rather the acceleration of the object. That's why I broke up that force tension to show how much right Word force we have and how much upward force we have. Force tension dash x and force tension dash y because it's the force tension on the x-axis and the force tension on the y. The reason why I'm actually shifting that force tension y though is because in this orientation it implies that a vertical amount of that tension is applied to the space to the right of the system which just doesn't make sense that force needs to be applied directly to our system. All of these force vectors need to, well, originate from our system and then show the direction that the force was applied on the system. Because I redrew that force tension into its components, effectively, I have explained what that off-axis forces results were, how much up and how much to the right. This might make it a little bit easier for us to explain with a summation equation 
why overall the sled and the kids are being pulled at a constant speed. So when we're talking about the sum of the forces on the x-axis, we have two. To the right, we have the horizontal component of the force tension, Ftx, x, minus, minus the force friction. So when we combine those two forces, the rightward force and the leftward force, their net result is zero newtons of force, which means there is zero acceleration horizontally. Vertically, we're also assuming zero acceleration. So we're saying that overall, the sum of all of the forces on the y-axis should be zero newtons. We have two forces upwards, so we combine them, force normal plus force ty, that vertical component of tension. And then we subtract the single downward force, which is the force gravity. We could also write that without the parentheses, just to show that Fn plus Fty minus Fg, and mathematically, that would be equivalent. Now, while these are great summation equations for this working free body diagram, one thing that's important to remember is that Fty and Ftx are not actual forces. They are components of that interaction between the man and the system. So while these are the two summation equations that we got from a working free body diagram that included our component forces, really the four forces that are interacting with our system are gravity, friction, normal, and tension.